Okay. Let me know when your screen is visible, okay? Is the screen visible to all of you? Yes, ma'am. OK, fine. So uh, this would be our third lecture on radiation. And uh, till now, what we have discussed is that we have discussed what is radiation, a little bit about those electromagnetic waves. Then we have talked about the different laws of radiation. Then we, uh, we talked about the concept of emissivity. And we have learned how, according to Kirchhoff's law, we can see that the emissivity is equal to the absorptivity, even the two bodies are in thermal equilibrium. Then the last part that we were discussing was about something which we call the view factor. So what was the view factor? View factor is essentially what we were talking about. Let me just get my pen. Just give me a moment, guys. I will stop sharing. Okay, and I'll start again. Okay, sorry. So, uh, something went wrong there. So when we were talking about the view factors, essentially when we have two bodies, say body one is out here and body two is out here, when the body one, which is body one, say this is body two, is giving off radiation, how much of this radiation can be seen by body two? That is what we call the view factor. And that's how we had defined the view factor out here. That how much, what fraction of the total radiant energy is emitted by surface one, which is intercepted by surface Two, that is, or I and J, whichever one uh, way you want to call it. So the first body is giving off radiation. How much of that radiation is actually intercepted or is actually seen by the second body? Or if the second body is giving off radiation, how much of that is seen by the first body? Now, this we essentially define by the notation. If the radiation is given off by body one and is being seen by body two, then we call it F12. And if the radiation is being given off by body two and it has been intercepted by body one, we call that F21. That is how we had defined view factors. And when we talked about view factors, we had seen some small things about uh, what is Fij equal to zero and Fij equal to one means if all the radiation given out by body I falls on body J and nothing anywhere else, then Fij is equal to one. And if whatever uh, radiation is given out by body I is not, not, none of it is falling on body J, then Fij is equal to zero. And we had also looked at a couple of uh, view factor relations. One was the reciprocity rule, which said that Ai Fij is equal to Aj F, Fji. When heat is being exchanged between two bodies, one and two or I and J. Then we talked about the summation rules, that we, if we have an enclosed an, an enclosure, then the amount of radiation given out by the surface, any one surface, the, there's a summation of the view factors from the surface of in an enclosure to all the surfaces, and this total summation is equal to unity. That means the view factors, the summation of the view factors, Fij is equal to unity. And then we talked about two simple examples. Now let us look at a third rule. This is called the rule of symmetry or the symmetry rule. Now, an easy example to understand is a pyramid. In a pyramid, what do you know? The base of the pyramid, let me get the equivalent. I'll bring it the pointer, laser pointer. So the base of the pyramid is, say, for example, a square. So the length of the sides are all equal. And the rectangle uh, triangles on either side. So there'll be one triangle on this base, one on this side, one on this side, and one on the fourth side. So there'll be four triangles. All four of these triangles will be identical to each other. 
they could be they will be isosceles triangles that means the two sides are equal and the base is a different uh, length but each of these uh, triangles will be identical to, to each other or we can say that they are symmetric and because they are symmetric the view factors will from the base surface to any of these faces will be identical so so for example the uh, the base is known as face 1 or the surface 1 the left hand side is surface 2 the back side is surface 3 the this one is surface 4 and the one the light blue which is facing me is say surface 5 so there are five surfaces involved and the view factor of surface from surface 1 the radiation that is falling on 2 3 4 and 5 they will be the same because these the surfaces are identical so f12 will be equal to f13 will be equal to f14 will be equal to f15 now this is an enclosed surface so from the summation rule i can say that f11 plus f12 plus f13 plus f14 plus f15 is equal to 1 all of them now just imagine all the radiation that is going out of the flat surface or the base surface that is 1 nothing will fall on itself it will either fall on this face this face this one or the fourth one but nothing will fall on itself so that is why we can say that f11 is equal to 0 so if i put f11 equal to 0 out here we are left with f12 plus f13 plus f14 plus f15 is equal to 1 and since each of these are all equal we can write 4 times f12 is equal to 1 and if i want to find out what is the value of f12 then the value of f12 is 1/4 or 0.25 so f12 is 0.25 f13 is 0.25 f14 is 0.25 and f15 is also 0.25 each of these are 0.25 so this is so whenever we have symmetric surfaces the rule of symmetry can be used now let us do a couple of more examples using the three different uh, rules that we have learned the reciprocity rule the summation rule and the symmetry rule so the first one says determine the view factors f12 and f21 for the following geometries what is the first geometry the sphere of diameter d inside a cubical box of length equal to d so we have a box which is like a cube and the length of this cube is l that means it is l on all sides and inside this we have placed say a sphere which has got a diameter equal to d and l is equal to d so the sphere surfaces are touching the walls of at all the six sides of the of the cube so l is equal to d this what is shown out here is the radius which is d by 2 and the sphere is known as surface 2 Uh, sorry the sphere is known as surface 1 a1 and the cube outside is called my surface 2 is the geometry clear i hope that there is a sphere which is placed just imagine you have a basketball and you place the basketball in the box that it has come in so this is exactly that the, uh, the diameter of this ball is same as the diameter of the box and we will try to find out the values of f12 and f21 for this case first let's do this then we'll look at the next one for the sphere inside the box l is equal to d <coughs> now just think about it whatever radiation is given by body 1 that means whatever radiation is given out by the sphere none of it is falling on itself everything that we have let me just get my pen again okay so whatever radiation is given out by 1 is falling on these different faces of the cube the side at the bottom on top all kinds of sides it's coming to the faces of the tube cube none of it is actually falling on itself so because none of it is falling on itself we say that f11 is equal to 0 f11 because 1 is my the sphere inside is equal to 0 and since we know that f11 plus f12 is equal to 1 in that case f12 becomes equal to 1 because we have to find these two values f12 and f21 So in this case, f one two is equal to one. Now, from the reciprocity rule, we know that a one f one two is equal to a two f two one. 
Now, what is A, A1? A1 is the area of the sphere that is there. So that area of the sphere is 2 pi r square or pi d square. And what is the A2? A2 is the area of the cube that is there. So area of each side of the cube is L squared. And there are six such sides. So we have for the cube, the area is 6 L squared. Now, if I want to find out the value of F21, I can write that F21 is equal to, from the reciprocity rule, A1 by A2 into F12. So F12 into A1 ka value when I like diya hai, that is pi d squared. And the A2 value is written as 6 L squared. So now you know that we have already specified that L is equal to D. So instead of writing at 6 L squared, I'm writing 6 D squared. So then D squared and D squared cancel with each other. We write in the, so this becomes only pi by 6. And F12 we had seen earlier is equal to 1. So if I put the value of F12 as 1, multiplied by pi by 6, this gives me a value of pi by 6. Okay. So this is what we had, uh, we were asked to find out. That is F12. And now we have found out the value of F21. Now, just in case I would, this is like I'm, I'm extending the problem. Suppose we are asked to find it for surface two also. Then what happens? That means whatever radiation is given out by the cube, how much of that is falling on the sphere? So you know that from the summation rule that F21 plus F22 is equal to 1. Because there are only two surfaces involved out here. F21 plus F22 is equal to 1. And F22 is equal to F21. So we have found out what is F21. If I put this F21 value out here, I can estimate the value of F22. So F22 is equal to 1 minus pi by 6, which is equal to 0. 0.4764. This was not really asked in the problem, but I'm just showing it that in case he pucha jata hai, this is how we can find out the value of F22. So F12 is equal to 1 and F21 is equal to pi by 6. Tell me, are they, do you have any questions about this problem? If not, tell me that also so that I can move on. No, ma'am. It's okay. All right. So let us do another problem. So the second problem is that diagonal partition with within the long square duct. Let me show you the picture. So suppose we have a long square duct like this. Just imagine what you have is like a, a square tube, a square tube like this. The length of this square, sides of the square is L and L. And the length of the tube itself is say B. And now we are talking about the diagonal to this, this gray diagonal, which is there. If I cut it from the side, this is what it will look like. The length is this is L and this is also L. And we are talking about the diagonal. And we are supposed to calculate the view factors of F12 and F21. But because we have the diagonal, there are actually three surfaces. One is the surface of the diagonal, which is given as A1. One is the perpendicular, which is called as A2. And one is the base, which is called as A3. So A3 is the base, the perpendicular is A2, and the diagonal is A1. And you're asked to find out the values of F12 and F21. We can also find out other values if required, but right now that is what it is. I hope the geometry is clear that we have, instead of a circular tube, now we have a square tube and we have the surface of the diagonal that is there. We are trying to find out uh, all the view factors based on this diagonal. Now let us see that for this, now how many surfaces are involved out here? There are three surfaces, one, then we have two, and then we have three. So from the summation rule, we can say that F11 plus F12 plus F13 is equal to one because there are three surfaces. Now, if you look at whatever radiation is given out by this diagonal, none of this is going to fall on itself. Let me get the pointer again, uh, pen again, that whatever is given out by this diagonal, it is going to either fall on this surface from here to here, or some of it can fall on this surface. Some of it will fall on this surface and some of it will fall on this surface. Nothing will fall on itself. As a result of which, F11 is equal to zero when one is the diagonal surface. And if, sorry. And if you notice that because this length of this side is equal to the length of this side, 
this is a symmetric problem. So the, this is symmetric. That means whatever radiation, amount of radiation that comes out of one, the same amount of radiation will fall on surface two and surface three, equal amounts. So F12 and F is equal to F13. This is from my symmetry rule. Symmetry rule will give us this part. So from the summation rule, I can write, now say if, F, if F12 is equal to F13, I can, instead of writing F12 plus F13, I can write two times F12. So F11 plus two times F12 is equal to one. Now we have seen that F11 is equal to zero. So if I put in this value out here that F11 is equal to zero, what we have is that F12, two times F12 is equal to one. So if I take this two on the right hand side, so F12 is equal to 0.5. This is my first thing that we needed to find out. What is the value of F12? So F12 is equal to 0.5. Now let us see F21. F21 can be found out from my reciprocity rule that A F, F21 is equal to A1 into F12 divided by A2 because this A2 was on the left hand side. So A1 and A2 are the areas of surfaces 1 and surface 2. So A1, if you look at the Pythagoras theorem, we can, and if this length is L, we can say that L square plus L square, square root of that is this particular diagonal, the diagonal which is there. So the diagonal is essentially equal to 2 times square root of 2 times L square. So that is why I'm writing this as square root of L because this is equal to diagonal, uh, this is square root of two times L square. So uh, we keep the two time, uh, root two out here and this L square becomes L. Into now, if I look at the surface area of this, which is surface area of what? Surface or area of this diagonal surface. So this is one side. This is like a rectangle, which has been kept inclined. That means a tera type ka rectangle so if I, my, for a rectangle, the area can be found out by length into breadth. So this is my breadth and this is my length, which is equal to B. So this is the area of surface one. Surface two is what? Surface two is this particular surface, which is the perpendicular surface. So this will be L into B. So we have the value of L into B. So now we write these two values in the areas of A1 and A2. So what we are left with is these two get cancelled, L gets cancelled. We are just multiplying square root of 2 into F12. So F12, we had seen it was equal to 0.5. So 0.5 into square root of 2 comes out to be equal to 0.71. So F12 is 0.5 and F21 is 0.71. Any doubts with this? In this case, what we have done is that we have used another rule, which is that little bit of the symmetry rule has been used out here to solve the problem. Any questions or doubts about this one? Because view factor questions are easy to answer and these are very favorite questions as far as gate is concerned. So if you don't understand, please tell me right now. I can explain things all over again. Any doubts or is it clear? Can someone please answer? Is someone there in the class? Yes, sir. No problems, no doubts? Okay, since none of you are answering, I would presume that you don't have any questions. Okay, so now or if you look at the different geometries, the problems that I had done before, let us look at the different examples that we did. One was two concentric circles. Let me go back and go to my pointer. Okay, so this problem was with two concentric circles, but two circles having a common center. The next problem was a hemisphere which was kept on the circular surface. The next one was uh, about a sphere kept inside a cube. And the last one was a square duct. And we were talking about the diagonal of the square duct. So all of these were essentially simple geometries. But it is highly possible that we might have 
to calculate view factors from geometries which are not too simple. They may be complicated geometries, their angles may be different. So in that case, how do we calculate the view factors? The view factors in such cases are calculated using this general expression. This, in order to understand this general expression, you have to look at this particular figure. So if you look at this figure, you see that this is the small section. This is body A1. And there's a small portion of that section. So it is called DA1 or the differential of A1. This whole body is A1. And this is an ira uh, irregular kind of a body. This is body A2, which is also irregular. And small section of that is DA2. Now, the angle between the perpendicular and the, uh, uh, the line joining the two surfaces, this is given as theta 1 and this is given as theta 2. And uh, the distance between these two bodies is given as R. So based on this, uh, the view factor F12 is written as by the expression of the formula is 1 by A1. That means the area of body 1 because here we are calculating F12. That means radiation is going out of body 1 and is being intercepted by body 2. So A1, 1 by A1, integral over surface A1, integral over surface A2, cos phi 1 into cos phi 2 by dr squared. And this is dA1 and dA2. Obviously, this is not an easy integral to solve for us. And the values will depend on the geometry of the system. So since it is a... <coughs> excuse me. Not an easy geometry to solve. We don't even have to solve it. A person called Hotel, Hotel integrated these relationships for some common geometries. And these values, he put in these values in the form of charts. So these charts are known as Hotel charts. I will show you some of these charts. Uh, in fact, I'll show you three of these charts in the next three slides. And I will tell you how to use or estimate the view factors using the Hotel charts. But please remember, that these three are not the only hotel charts. Hotel charts, there are lots of them. I am only showing you three of them. So these, these three of them are for three different geometries, but there are several other hotel charts which are of other geometries which can be used for calculations of view factors. So uh, remember, keep that in mind, and then we let us look at the hotel charts. This is the first hotel chart. So what is it? On the y-axis, what we have is F12. That means the view factor of uh, when the uh, radiation is going from body 1 and it is being intercepted by body 2. In the x-axis, what we have is the ratio of L2 by D. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit for you. So this is L2 by D. And these different lines which are drawn, these are for values of L1 by D. Now, what is L2 and L1? So this particular hotel chart is for this kind of a geometry. That this the, the, we are trying to calculate the view factors between two surfaces which are parallel to each other. So surface 1 is A1 and the second surface is A2. Now, this could be a square or this could be a rectangle. Right now, we're considering it to be a rectangle because one side has got a length of L1 and the other side has got a length of L2. They may be equal, they may not be equal. And the distance between these two plates is equal to D. So what we are trying to understand, what is the value of F12 out here? That means whatever radiation is going out of A, how much of that is falling on the body 2? So for this, we calculate two things, L1 by D. L1 by D means the length of this side by the distance between the two plates. And the other thing which we need in the x-axis, if you remember, I have told you, is L2 by D. What is L2? L2 is equal to the length of this side by the distance between the two plates. So once we have this value of L1 by D and L2 by D, say, for example, I have a value of L2 by D equal to 2 and a value of L1 by D equal to 1. So L1 by D is 1 and L2 by D is equal to 2. So for this, what do we do? We look at where is L2 by D equal to 2 here. And then we go straight up from this line till we reach the, one of the blue curves where L1 by D is equal to, say, 1. So you see that this is the point where we have L1 by D equal to 1. So from here, I go to my left-hand side axis. 
left hand side axis and you will see that this is my view factor so how much does that come out to be this is point 2 this is point uh, 4 6 8 and 10 somewhere around point 2 8 etc is my view factor so this is how we find out the view factor using this particular chart uh, stop me and ask me questions if you cannot understand what i'm telling you let us look at this next uh, hotel chart the previous one was called view factor between two aligned parallel rectangles of equal size each of these rectangles are of equal size and we are trying to find out the view factor between them the next one is view factor between two perpendicular rectangles with a common edge so there is one flat rectangle out here and there is a perpendicular rectangle standing up from it and this edge is common between the two so suppose we have two plates which are perpendicular to each other in that case the view factor the base plate is called 1 and the perpendicular plate is called 2 so we try to when we try to find out the view factor f12 then how do we do that let us see so on the x axis we have the ratio of l2 by w what is l2 l2 is the length or or the height of this perpendicular face rectangle and w is the width of this perpendicular one so this is l2 by w and this one on the different blue lines are for l1 by w what is l1 L1 is the length of this particular plate which is out here and the W is the width of that plate so we once we find out those two values we can again do the same thing like i said that if i do a value of say 2 L2 by W is 2 and L1 by W is say 1 then from here i can go to the left hand side and see what is going to be my view factor it will be slightly more than 0.4 0.4 we have to see what it is 0.42 0.43 0.44 and it will be somewhere between 0.44 and 0.45 that is going to be my view factor so when we have to use this hotel charts what the way we do it is that we look at our problem once we have seen our problem then you uh, we look at what is the geometry of our problem and which chart actually uh, is similar to that geometry which is out here let me do the third one show you the third one now in the case of the third one this is between two coaxial parallel disks so this is a disk this is another disk this disk has got a radius of r1 this disk has got a radius of r2 and the distance between these two is equal to l obviously the according to this picture r1 is that means this lower disk is a bit larger than the upper disk ho bhi sakta hai nahi bhi ho sakta it doesn't matter but this is how we will take it the lower one is 1 the upper one is 2 again what is my x axis x axis is l by r1 that means this distance between the uh, disks by the radius of the bottom disk and uh, this blue lines are r2 by l that is the radius of the upper disk by the length or the distance between the two disks so once we have these two values we find the point at which they coincide and once we have found out say for example i said 2 and if i go here and i find out the value of r2 by l equal to 1 i go to my left hand side and i see that f12 is 0.48 or something to that effect is equal to my f12 so these are the different these are only three examples that i'm telling you there are several such charts which are known as hotel charts and these hotel charts will be used to calculate the view factors because we will need the view factors when we are talking about extra heat exchange of heat between two bodies which are not black or uh, which are not parallel to each other so the view factor is not equal to 1 in that case these kind of charts are important before we go into this we can see another use another rule as we call it this is called the superposition rule the view factor from a surface i to a surface j is equal to the sum of the view factors from surface i to parts of surface j let us see okay what does it mean now let us look at this is a almost a right angle triangle okay it almost it is a right angle triangle now this right angle triangle is broken up into two pieces the bottom piece is another smaller right angle triangle and the top piece this one is a scalene triangle which is there where none of the sides are equal to each other so we can break these two up and the base is called 1 from the corner to this here is 2 
and this part from here to the top is surface 3. So surface 2, surface 3 and surface 1. This can be written as, can be broken up as the view factor from 1 to 2, that means this bottom section, plus the view factor from 1 to 3, which is the top kind of a triangular section, which is out here. This is what is called the superposition rule. So let, now let us see what it is. F123, 2, 3, two, three means we are talking about this particular surface together. So the radiation that is going out of 1 falling on 2, 3 is equal to the F12. That means this is F12 plus F13. So this is F12 and F13. Now, how do we do this? Uh, how do we find out these values? So if you look at this, this picture can be of two planes which are perpendicular to each other. So there's a base plane and there is a standing plane. If you look at this one also, there's a base plane and there is a perpendicular plane above it. Now we have seen from the Hotel charts that it's the second Hotel chart essentially is talking about one surface flat and one surface which is perpendicular to it. So we will use the second Hotel chart when we use this kind of chart to find out the value of F123, that means F1 to, to the 2, 3 surface and F1 to 2 surface. Both of these can be used or found out using the hotel charts. And once we have done that, then we can use this relationship to find out the value of F13. So F13 will be F123 minus F12. And we can use that and calculate it. Again, we can also say that F1, uh, 1, 2, 3, hua, or this is ulta, F2, 3, 1. That means whatever is given off by this surface, how much of it is falling on surface 1. So the radiation is now given off by this side and it is falling on surface 1. So from here, we can say that A1 plus A2, because the areas of this side and the area of this side, into F2, 3, 1 is equal to A2, F2, 1 plus A3, F3, 1. A2 is the area of this side and A3 is the area of this side. So using this concept, I can write this as A2 F2 1 plus A3 F3 1 divided by A2 plus A3. A1, A2, A3 are essentially areas. We can, we can find out that from geometry. Now, uh, from this problem, I have found out what is F12. And using the reciprocity rule, I can finally find out what is F21. So this value is there with me. And using this relationship, I have found out what is F13. F13 is equal to F123 minus F12. So once we have F13, I can use the reciprocity rule to find out what is F31. So this is another rule, important rule, which is called the superposition rule and can be used to find out or solve for problems from a certain surface. So let us just do one problem using uh, the how to use this hotel charts for a practical problem. Now let us see what do we have. Look at the question. A truncated cone has a top and bottom diameters of 10 centimeter and 20 centimeter. So what we have, let me get my pen. So this is a truncated cone. So this would have been like a cone out here. Okay. So usko maine idhar se chop kar diya. So when we have this kind of a situa situation, the top diameter is 10 centimeters and the bottom diameter is again 20 centimeters. So if the diameter is 10 centimeters, the radius is 5 centimeters. And in the bottom, the diameter is 20 centimeters then the radius is 10 centimeters. Calculate the shape factor between the top surface and the side and also the shape between factor between the size and its side and itself. Let us understand this. Now, when we have this kind of a diagram, there are three surfaces involved. One is the base surface out here, which is one. One is the top surface, circular surface, which is two. These are like disks out here. And uske charo taraf jo surface hai, that is my, what is called the, the lateral surface. On this side, this whole surface that we are talking about, this is called my surface 3. So there are three surfaces involved out here. The top surface is 2, the bottom surface is 1, and the side surface is 3. And you're supposed to find out the shape factor between the top surface. Top surface kya hai? Top surface is 2. And the side, which is 
surface three, and also the shape factor between the size and itself. That means what we side in itself, side B is number three, and itself is also number three. So what we have to find out is essentially F two three, and we have to also find out the value of F three three. So these are the two things that we need to find out. Now let us see what we can do. If you look at the hotel charts that we have talked about, you will see amongst the first one was two uh, parallel rectangular plates of equal size, which are uh, which are present, and we are trying to understand what is the view factor. The second one that we had was two plates which were perpendicular to each other. And the third one that we had is two coaxial discs. That is the same figure I have again pasted out here for you to understand. So this one, if we just look at the top surface out here and the bottom surface out here, they look more or less like this one. Of course, it doesn't have a lateral surface. It's charts ka chart of lateral surface nahi hai, but which we also have, which we will see how we will deal with it. But the top and the bottom is similar to this one. So if I have to use this hotel charts, I need to know the value of L by R1. Now, what does L think about it? L is the length, which is 10 centimeter. And what is R1, which is the radius, which is also equal to 10 centimeter. So L by R1 is equal to 10 by 10, which is equal to 1. Now, the second thing that we have to do is R2 by L, R2 by L, which is out here. What is R2? R2, R2 is this value, which is the top radius, which is equal to 5, and L is equal to 10. So R2 by L is equal to 0.5. Now, if you go to this part where you have L by R1 equal to 1 from here, and from the one line, we go straight up to a factor of, say, 0.5 out here. And we draw a straight line to the left, and we can see that the value of from the figure, if I, I said, obviously I'm drawing a rough figure right now. If you look at, put a scale and you will see that F12 is equal to 0 0.12. Now, what we have is that using the reciprocity rule, I know A1 F12 is equal to A2 F21. So F21 out here can be calculated from the reciprocity rule since I know F12. So this is F12 multiplied by the areas area of surface one which is the large one at the bottom is equal to pi r1 square and the top area is part r pi r2 square so this is pi 10 square divided by pi 5 square so together this comes out to be here here we have together this comes out to be a value of 0.48 so what is the values now f12 is equal to 0.12 f21 is equal to 0.48 now, since there are three surfaces involved, we uh, considering surface two, we can say that F21 plus F22 plus F23 is equal to one. Now, what is F22? F22 means all the radiation that is given out by surface two. Where is it falling? It can fall either on this wall or it can fall on the bottom, but nothing will fall on itself. So F22 in this case, again, is equal to zero so if i put this f22 equal to zero out here what am i left with am i le i'm left with f21 and f23 so f23 is now equal to one minus f21 so f21 is uh where we have it is we found out the value is 0.8 so when i do that so one minus f21 minus f22 f22 to zero so 1 minus 0.48 is equal to 0.52. So the first part of the question, what is the view factor of 2 by 3? 2, 3 is equal to 0.52. What does this mean? This means that when surface 2 gives away radiation, 52% of that fall on the sides, on the lateral sides, and 48% falls on the base, which is down here. This is what is meant by F23 equal to 0.52. That is 52% of that is falling on the lateral surfaces, which we are calling surface number three. Now, we all we had to find, if you remember, two things. One was F23, which we have found out. The other one is F33, which we have to find out now. 
Now, if I look at how to find out F33, you will see that just like we had it for surface 2, for surface 1, I can write F11 plus F12 plus F13 is equal to 1. What is F11? F11 means whatever radiation is given out by body 1, how much of it is falling back to it. And we realize that nothing is falling back. Whatever is given out, either it is going to go towards the wall out here or it is going to go towards the top out here. There is no other place it can go to. So F11 is equal to 0. So if, put, if I put F11 equal to 0, what I'm left with is F12 plus F13. And F13 is equal to 1 minus F12. So F12 is, as we had determined earlier, is equal to 0.12 from the Hotel charts. So F13 becomes equal to 0.88, F13. That means whatever is coming out of surface 1, 88% of, of that is falling on the sides. And the rest of it, that is 12%, is the only one that is going to the top. Now, since I found out F13, I can find out F31. F31 can be found out from the reciprocity rule. Now, from the reciprocity rule, I can say that A1, F13 is equal to A3, F31. Or F1, F31 is equal to A1 by A3 into F13. F13 ka the value hume mil gaya hai. We have to find out the areas of A1 and A3. So A1 is... What is A1, if you remember, A1 is the, sorry, the bottom surface. Let me just erase this part. This is. Okay. Um, so this is the surface one, 88% is going to these walls. And that the area of the lateral surface is given as pi into r1. This is geometry, nothing else. Pi into r1 plus r2 into square root of r1 minus r2 squared plus l squared. So if I do that, that is pi. This is pi dl essentially kind of thing. So uh, we put in the values of r1 and r2 and put in the value of l. And this is the area of side number three that you or the surface three that we have find out. And surface one, which is there, this is obviously a simple sphere, uh, sorry, a simple disk. So the area is equal to pi r squared. That means pi 10 squared divided by 526.86, that is the area of third one, multiplied by f13. So this gives me f31. So f31 comes out to be equal to 0.525. Now for surface two, we had seen that F23 was equal to 0.52. This F23 was equal to 52. We had found that out earlier. So now that we have found out what is F23, okay, 0.52, and A2 F23 is equal to A3 F32. Because if you're going, going to look at the third surface, third surface, you know, is F31 plus F32 is plus F33 is equal to 1. So F31, we have uh, found out from here is 0.528. We have to find out what is the value of F32. That we are using the value of A2, F23 divided by A3. A2 is, we found out the surface area of the disk, the top disk, divided by the surface area at the, of the lateral side, multiplied by F23. F23, we had found out that it is equal to 0.52. So F32 is equal to 0 0.0755. So what is F32? This means that amount of radiation given out by surface 3, which is falling on surface 2. Now, the radiation that is given by surface 3, this is the radiation that is giving out. Now, this radiation that is going out from here, it can go to surface 2. A lot of it will go to its own surface, and some of it will go to the bottom. All of this will happen. So you see the amount that is going to the own surface is a very small fraction, that is 0 0.0775. Whatever it is, it is. So from the third surface, we can say that F31 plus F32 plus F33 is equal to 1. And we needed to find out the value of F33. So this is written as 1 minus 
F31 is 0.125 to 5. We have found it out out here. And F32, we just now found out, is 0 0.0775. So 1 minus F31 minus F32. This is the amount that is F33. So the amount of radiation that is coming out from the lateral sides and falling on itself is close to 40%. That means 39.75% of it falls on itself. A very small fraction falls on the top surface and obviously a more, the largest portion falls on the larger bottom surface. So F33 is equal to 0.3975. So I would like all of you to go through these examples again, study them and see if you can understand everything that is being said. And if you cannot, let me know in the next class. And then we will continue from here. Uh, the next part that we're going to talk about is about radiation heat transfer between two bodies. This is an entirely different section. So I will not uh, continue with this today. We will start this in tomorrow's class. The, how do we kind out? Till now, whatever we have talked about is how the radiation is going out from only one body. One body is giving out radiation. How to calculate that? What are the factors involved? There is a view factor involved. There's an emissivity involved. If it's a black body, emissivity is equal to one. But if it is a gray body or any other real body, the emissivity will be less than one. So and the area is important. The temperature is important when we are trying talking about radiation coming out from a single body. And the most one of the most important factors when we are talking about radiation between two bodies would be the view factor. And we have learned substantially about this big view factor today. And we have done several examples. And please let me know if you still have doubts about uh, how to estimate the view factors. And the rules that we have talked about are the reciprocity rule, the summation rule, the symmetry rule, and the uh, superposition rule. Apart from that, we have also talked about the hotel charts which will help us calculate the view factors for odd geometries. So I will uh, stop out here today and we'll continue in the next class from here.